right, so we're excited now to introduce our 2023 Innovator of Color Award recipients. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to uh, Phyllis and Adrian, who are going to introduce our recipients. Uh, we have Phyllis, who is the CEO of Leap Innovations, and Adrian, who's the CEO of Study.com. And they're going to give you a little more background about our recipients and bring them on out. So please give a warm welcome to Phyllis and Adrian. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> All right. I am so excited to be here this morning to introduce our 2023 Innovator of Color Award with my co-chair, Adrian Rittner, who will be out here in a few minutes. Um, we are thrilled for this opportunity. And Adrian, as you remember, uh, who's the CEO of Study.com, actually won the award last year. The ASU GSV Innovator of Color Award was created in 2015 to illuminate remarkable leaders of color whose extraordinary work and innovations are making an outsized impact and helping ensure all people have equal access to the future. Since its inception, 14 amazing leaders have received this award who have a strong track record and demonstrated significant accomplishments in education, created a product or program to solve a problem in a unique, new, and different way, and has moved the needle to accelerate young black and brown children in, and in, children in poverty across the globe. I am pleased to introduce and thank Cecil Hobbs from Russell Reynolds and Associates. He's the executive director and has supported and sponsored this award for the last eight years. Cecil will announce our first award recipient. Good morning. I'm Cecil Hobbs, and it is a pleasure uh, to be here. We've uh, been grateful to have the opportunity to continue to sponsor uh, the Innovator of Color Award for nearly a decade. And uh, we look forward to continued partnership uh, with ASU GSV over the coming years. I have the, the great pleasure of introducing Sharif El Meki, um, <laughs> CEO. Uh, who's the CEO for the Center of Black Educator Development. When we talk about the conference theme of imagining a new era in which all people have access, equal access to the future, I think about what does it mean to imagine? Imagination is begotten from inspiration meeting inquiry. Imagination happens when inspiration meets inquiry. In Sharif's case, that inspiration started in the most unlikely of places, in the aftermath of being shot at a high school football game over an altercation, and watching youth being adjudicated through the system in Philadelphia. He began to develop the embers of a passion for working with youth. Later, he met Dr. Martin Ryder, who's a stalwart in the Philly educational scene, uh, who stoked that fire into a full-on blaze around working with youth and, youth and channeling his passion into serving through education and building a pipeline for educators. Then inquiry came. In a city where 87% of black men have no post-secondary education, Sharif asked the question, how do we get beyond hand-wringing and sad singing to real action, systemic change that improves outcomes? That led him to build the pipeline for black educators where data shows that over 20% increase in the likelihood of uh, children going to college uh, happens as a result of their participation, uh, their, their having encountered a black educator uh, during their formative years. In a city that plans 50 years ahead, that planning had not come forth um, in the pipeline for teachers. Philly hires something around the tune of 700 to 1,000 educators per year, yet there was no systematic pipeline. 
in my work at Russell Reynolds, we, every corporation we work with, every nonprofit we work with has a deep thought and process around succession planning, yet Philly had none. And so Sharif said, why can't, he asked the question, why can't we start in high school getting children to imagine what it would be like to be a teacher of color impacting young lives? That led him to where he is today, and he's inspiring others. So we thank you, Sharif, for your inspiration in your example and the encouragement of seekers among us to continue to ask the question, how do we get beyond hand-wringing and sad singing to real impact? Past a uh, couple of days, I've seen so many friends uh, and partners uh, in this space. You know, over 30 years as an educator, I've never not been in community with others. Uh, whether it's Edlock, whether it's Pahara, you know, whether it's uh, Eight Black Hands or the Fellowship, Black Male Educators for Social Justice, or my amazing team, the Center for Black Educator Development, never not been in community. And I'm grateful for that. I want to just say thank you to family, friends, and, and team, all amazing individually and collectively. Thank you, Deborah, Clyde, Adrian, Phyllis, Adrian, my apologies, and the nominating committee, and of course, the entire ASU GSV community. Our students have had a consistent rallying cry and demand that stretched from the 1800s through the Brown versus Board of education decision, and it continues today. That demand has been and is, we need black teachers. So hearing our students' voices, we began an organization, the Center for Black Educator Development, to respond to their rallying cry and demand. Dr. Martin Luther King used to speak about the moral arc of the universe bending towards justice. But black educators throughout history and today aren't passive participants in history. They are hammer wielders, those with agency and focus who are bending, willing, and teaching the moral arc towards justice. We know that there is no intervention like an effective and supported black educator. And so imagine what partnerships in that realm could and will look like. Our organization looks forward to what's to come, and what's to come includes partnerships with many of you in here. Thank you so much, we appreciate you. Buenos dias. My name is uh, Adrian Redner, and as the co-chair of this award, I am truly honored to introduce uh, the next recipient for the 2023 Innovator of Color, Martin Basiri. Um, I've been actually had the good fortune of knowing Martin for a while, and I can really relate to a lot of his journey uh, as a first-gen immigrant entrepreneur. Um, if you haven't uh, met Martin, he comes from very humble beginnings in Iran and had to fight really hard to be able to study abroad and work through that system to figure out how to get to Canada and get his engineering degree. He realized just how much of a difference that was going to make in his life and he helped his two younger brothers do the same. And together in 2015 they said, this is too complex, this is too difficult but millions of other international students could benefit, and they founded Apply Board to really help educate the world and help with social mobility for all. Fast forward to now with his um, leadership, they've helped over 600,000 students study abroad. 
They've helped students get to over 1,600 different schools and universities in over 130 countries, including Canada, US, UK, and many, many more. And the reality is, if that's all I had to say about Martin, that would be enough for this award and, and many, many more. But what I've gone to note about him is, his passion for impact comes from his heart, from his soul. He really wants to make a difference. And two years ago, in this stage, he said, I love what we're doing, but it's not enough. The only people I can help are those with financial access. And guess what? There's a lot more out there across the world without it. So he started, just a few months ago, Passage, as his new uh, approach to figuring out a really way to get the financial infrastructure for smart immigration to work. So please join me in congratulating uh, Martin Basiri for his amazing work and all the impact he will continue to do over the next many years across the world. <laughs>